What is it? We lost another one. I'll go tell Doc Forrest. It was Doc Forrest. big for us. We need help. Father sitting. We're leaving for Deering, Virginia in 10 minutes. Never heard of it. It's a small town two hours from here. I'm getting smaller. Fast. Three people dead, 12 more presenting. What are the symptoms? It's a rapid onset of fever, chills, headache, muscle, and eye pain. Followed by a cough that becomes more productive and blood tinged until the lungs fill up with fluids and the victims die of respiratory arrest. So they drown in their own fluids? Yeah. Sounds like we're looking for something viral. Could be, but for now, let's keep all our options open. What about a toxin? Maybe carbon monoxide exposure? Not likely. It wouldn't produce fever, chills, and shaking. Bacterial? Could be legionnaires. Lots of people were down at once from that. Whatever it is, it's kick-ass with a short incubation period. Early reports say the onset is rapid, one to two days. Progression to death, two to three. What did the local doctor say? Unfortunately, he was the third to die. Who called NIH? Town sheriff named Mills. From the cracks in his voice, I'd say he's undermanned and overwhelmed. Deering is pretty isolated from surrounding communities. Hopefully, whatever this is hasn't spread from there. Keyword, hopefully. I want everyone in prophylactic doses of antibiotics and antivirals. Load up the SUV with a Manthodina spectrum of antibiotics, IV solutions, culture materials, and protective gear. Sounds like we're going back into combat. We are. But this time, we don't know what we're headed into. Load up. Things spreads faster than an outbreak like this. Yeah, fear. Where is everybody? Before he died, the town doctor quarantined anyone presenting to an old hospital on the edge of town. How long has this place been shuttered? Three, four years now. What happened to it? Same thing happening in small towns everywhere. Population dwindles, tax base shrinks, malpractice insurance increases. Couldn't afford to keep it open. Doc Force was the only one who stayed. 
Lord knows we could have used them now. I thought you said there were only a dozen set. There were. What percentage of the population is down? Uh, I say at least 10. 10% so far. I want oxygen and masks on all the patients. I want gloves and gowns on anyone attending. Miles, triage these patients. Draw blood. Right. Powell, get some deputies. Go door to door. Look for anyone who might be presenting. If they are, get them down here as soon as possible. Got Emily, it. calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. If Doc Forrest is dead, then who's going to look after my boys? Hi there. How can I help you? You a doctor? From the National Institutes of Health. NIH? What's happening, Arnie? Why well, don't so we're here to try to find out? What's wrong with your sons? Um, fever and chills. They haven't been able to keep food down for a couple days. Hey, guys. My name is Dr. Connor. You guys can call me Steven, okay? But you guys look too strong to be sick. Can I see your hands? I just want to check something. Go ahead. All right, let me see your hands. All righty. One, two, three, squeeze. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good, strong grip. Let's see your arms, Dr. Connor. You got some strong biceps, <laughs> huh? You guys must play a mean game of football. I quarterback. He tackles. Yeah? My son's a quarterback. He started playing when he was about your age. All right, here's what we're going to do. Why don't you guys stick around? I'm going to get a doctor over here, see if he can help you feel better, get you back playing on the field again. Thank you. Why don't you find a nice, comfortable spot for your sons? I'll have someone come over as soon as possible. Okay, baby. Let's go. Come on. Bye, guys. <laughs> Their lymph nodes are swollen. They're burning up with a fever, too. Stephen, we can't handle this alone. We need to get these people to a working hospital. That'd be Riverside Memorial. It's 75 miles single lane from here. We're not moving them anywhere. Look at the conditions. There's not enough equipment in this facility to properly treat a cold. We don't know what we're up against. And with this percentage of the population down, this thing most likely transfers from person to person. We have to contain this thing here. Eva, call the Navy. Get a rapid response mobile unit to chopper and equipment and more personnel. And don't take no for an answer. I never do. We need to see the deceased. Lucky the AC still worked in here. What's with the pictures? Thought you might want to see what they looked like before. That's Dr. Forrest. Mm. Who's that? Name's Tucker, owns a local grocery store. And down there? And down there, that's uh, William Goldman, a lawyer. You know, if it weren't for these photos, you wouldn't know these men were all white. The blackening of the skin can happen in case of severe respiratory distress. As they struggled for breath, their blood vessels start to rupture and hemorrhage. The RR unit will be airborne in 30 minutes. You're a miracle worker. I do my best. Oh, my God. Yeah. What are we up against? It could be anything. There's no way I can do a proper post-mortem here to find out for sure. I'll have the RR unit chopper the bodies, the patient's culture, blood samples, and you back to NIH. We need an ID on what's killing these people ASAP. Steven. What do you got? The lawyer's got a good-sized laceration on his left hand. It's like new sutures. It was infected. I assume the dead doctor did the sewing. Who was handing him the thread? <laughs> Donnie! I can't breathe. OK. I can't breathe. Calm down. It'll, it'll, it'll pass, okay? It's okay. I'm a doctor. Let him help you, all right? Here we go. I'll just try to breathe in slowly, okay? In and out. That's it. It's good. It's good, Donnie. You're going to be okay now, okay? Just relax. Okay, now just lay back. Try to breathe normally. I'll come back and check on you in a minute, okay? Pretty damn scary. Uh, certainly understandable. I'm sure everyone's scared. You must be one of the NIH guys. Sorry, uh, my name's Miles. Lilith. Hi. Are you really a doctor? <laughs> yeah, I'm a doctor. Mm -hmm. Can you guys figure out what's going on? Well, that's what we're here for. We're really glad you're here. Thank you. By the way, I never would have guessed. Guessed what? That you were a doctor. And you hardly look old enough to vote. <laughs> well, Lilith, Dr. Connor needs to speak with you. I'm not sure how I can help. I'm not really a nurse. I just answered the phone, ran the doctor's office. Did you transcribe his patient's notes? Sure, from his dictation. 
then you knew as much about what was going on in his world as he did. <laughs> the first patient to die of this disease, uh, Mr. William Gullman. Was he a patient of Dr. Forrest? Well, most all of us have been at some time or another. Um, Mr. Gullman was in to see Dr. Forrest just last week. I think he came in to... To get a cut on his hand stitched up. Yeah. Do you know where that cut came from or how it happened? <laughs> the leech wee. Sorry? Leech wee? It's some kind of antelope. Mr. Gullman was big into hunting, all around the world kind of stuff. Even though the cut on his hand was really painful, he was still bragging that day about the leech wee he killed in Africa last month. Oh, the cut on his hand was more recent than that. Mr. Gullman was into taxidermy, mounted his own trophies, said he got his cut in the workroom of his house on the antler of his latest prize. Do you see any other symptoms of illness on Mr. Gullman that day? That day, no. But when he came in a few days later, he had a fever, chills. And then it went from there. Miles, while I'm gone, you're in charge. An AVR unit's on its way. But until they get here, administer amantadine and levofloxacin to anyone presenting. Start Lilith and Sheriff Mills on amantadine also. They've been around this thing since the beginning. I'll take care of them. Can you use a hand? I know everybody it may make them more comfortable. That'd be great. from the National Institutes of Health. And I'm the caretaker of this property. It still doesn't give you reasons to steal from a dead man. I'm not. I'm trying to find out what killed him so I can stop it from killing others. Foolish old man. Put down that gun. We've been taking care of this property through three generations of Goldman's. We've been living out in the guest house since June 3rd, 1938, two days after we got married. So when did you first notice that Mr. Gullman was sick? Well, I didn't. This foolish old man did. I was visiting my sister over in Jennings for a few days. Mr. Gullman started feeling under the weather about a week ago. Thought he'd caught a bug on the safari. But what hit him was more than that. I took him to Dr. Forrest a couple of times. But once the chill set in and he couldn't hold his food, he didn't want to get in the truck no more, which was fine by me. The man threw up all over my seat. And you know, that's hard to clean in his heat, if you know what I mean. He'd been sick for three days when I got home, and Mr. Gullman was coughing up something awful. There was even blood in his spit. The doctor came and took him to the hospital, and the rest you know. So you both took care of Mr. Gullman when he was ill? Hell, we changed his diapers as a baby. Why wouldn't we? I want you guys to get down to the hospital. I want to take some tests. He may have been exposed to what made him ill. We know what's going on. And since neither one of us is feeling bad, we kind of like to keep it that way. Excuse me. Connor. Steven, I've isolated the same viral particles from the lung tissue of the doctor, the lawyer, and the grocer. It looks like influenza A. No, this is not just a flu. No, it's not. I tested the viral particles against a panel of antibodies to identify the subgroup. And? None of the antibodies recognized it. Are you sure? I ran it three times, Stephen. Whatever it is, we're up against an incredibly aggressive mutation, one that we have never seen before. Stanley, Iris, I need you both to get down to the hospital. Excuse me. Connor. You've got 